In this video, we're going to start looking at one of the three rectangular approximation methods. So those are called, so RAM stands for rectangular approximation method. Right, and we it makes sense to use rectangles because those are the, that's it's a shape whose formula we uh, the er the area of whose formula we know, so we might as well use those. So, the first one we're going to do is we're going to do what's called uh, left LRAM, which stands for left hand endpoints. rectangular approximation method. Alright, so what we're what we're interested in was we want to find the area underneath f of x squared uh, on the interval 0 to 3. So we can break up this interval. We're going to do what's called partitioning, partitioning the interval into a bunch of subintervals of whatever length we want. So I'm going to start simple. I'm going to first make, break it up into three rectangles, which means we're going to calculate LRAM3, where the 3 means we're going to create three subintervals. And they have to have equal length. of equal length. All right. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, you have a, a subinterval here that's uh, has a, a, a length of 3. So even though this is pretty obvious, we want to break that up into three equal subintervals, then each subinterval is going to have a length of 1. But, but I want to point out that really what we're doing, and this will help in situations where it's not so obvious, we're doing 3 minus 0 to get that distance, and then we're dividing it into 3. So that's the length of each subinterval. All right, so just point that out, length of each subinterval. Okay, so now let's take our first subinterval right here, 0 to 1. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the left-hand side of that interval, and we're going to go up to the curve, and then that determines the height of our rectangle. Now, in this situation, the curve is at zero, so there really is no rectangle. So I'm just going to draw a horizontal line. Now we go to the next subinterval. So I'll just put a check. We did that one. I'm going to go to the next subinterval. On the interval one to two, the left hand side is one. I'm going to go up to the curve, and the value of the function on the left hand side of that subinterval that determines the height. So I'm up here at one. There's the height of my rectangle. On the second or on the third subinterval, I go to the left hand side. That's two. Go up to the curve. And that value determines the height of this rectangle. So now what I do is I find the areas of these three rectangles. The first one is zero. The second one would be one squared. So actually, let me let me write out technically what we just did. So you know, rectangles, the formula for area of a rectangle is uh, base times height. So I'm going to, or, or height times base, so I'm going to do f of 0, right? That took, that was the value of the function at the left, um, at the first subinterval. The rectangle has a base of 1. The second subinterval, the height of the rectangle is determined by f of 1 and the base is 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then the third one, the height was determined by plugging in 2 into the function, and the base is, area of, uh, is a length of 1. So f of 0, because this is x squared, is 0. So that's 0 times 1. f of 1 is 1 squared, which is 1. And f of 2 is 4. 4 times 1. So we get a total answer of 1 plus 4, which is 5. All right, so that's that's LRAM. That's the left-hand endpoint rectangular approximation method. Um, you'll notice in this case that it definitely underestimates, right? We're missing all this 
all this space here in purple is not being counted, right? So this this is a pretty crude approximation. You might want to think about ways you can improve the approximation. One obvious thing to do is just break up your subinterval into more rectangles, uh, or into more break up your interval into more subintervals is what I, I meant. Because by doing that, you'll end up getting um, you'll get more rectangles, and they'll start to cover that that space that you missed. All right. Um, on the next slide, we're going to look at RM, which is the same method, but we're using the right hand of the subintervals to determine the height of the rectangles. Whereas we did LRAM on the last slide, here we're going to do RAM. So RAM would mean the right hand. Right hand endpoint, rectangular. approximation method. And so this time I'm going to break up my subinterval. We're still interested in the area under f of x squared on the uh, interval 0 to 3. But this time I'm going to do r ram 6. I'm going to break it up into 6 subintervals as opposed to 3 like in when I did l ram. And you can notice what happens here. We get a better we're going to get a better approximation by doing that. So let's figure out the length of each subinterval. Well, the, dis the, the, the entire interval has a length of 3 minus 0, and I'm breaking those up into, or I'm dividing them up evenly into 6 pieces, so that gives me 3 6 or 1 half. So each subinterval is going to have a length of one half. So that means I'm going to have to put in a couple of these extra x values. That's a half, one, uh, two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves. And so now I have six subintervals, and this time the right hand and the the right hand of the subinterval determines the height of the rectangle. So here's my first subinterval. There's the the base of my rectangle, the height is going to be determined by f of a half, which would be which would be um, one half squared in this case. But in general, let's just say it's f of a half times the base, which is a length of one half. Now we go to our next subinterval. We go to the right hand side. That's one. We go up to the curve. So it would be f of one. times the length of the base, which would be a half. The next one, we go to three halves. That's the right-hand part of the, the subinterval. Up to the curve, so that's f of three halves times one half. Plus, at this point, hopefully you're getting the idea, f of two times one half plus f of 5 halves times 1 half and then lastly f of 3 times 1 half so let's turn these all into values uh, f of one half would be a fourth because it's a half squared, so that's a fourth times a half plus one squared is one, so that's one times a half. Three halves squared would be nine fourths times a half. F of two would be four times a half. Five halves would be twenty five fourths times a half. And F of three would be nine times a half. So when we add all those up, a fourth times a half plus one times a half plus nine fourths times a half, we add them all up, we get that R ram six is equal to eleven point three seven five. Now we should suspect 
that that's an overestimate because you can see each rectangle is above the curve so we're getting we're getting some extra extra area in each of these rectangles right so that's an overestimate five was an underestimate that was on the last slide so we should imagine that the true value of the area underneath this curve is somewhere in between 5 and 11.375. Alright, so again, a better way to approximate might be to make more subintervals. Um, if you average the 5 and the 11.375, that might give you something a little closer. Uh, and then next video we're going to see uh, an even better technique which will um, kind of even out this overestimating and underestimating that we're getting on each, uh, each subinterval by using RM and LRAM.